All right. Well, last night I was driving through West Virginia, and uh, I don't know why I'm making this video. Why I should even care anymore? I really don't. Um, I saw that uh, Watchman on the Wall made a video. Watchman on the Wall '88 made a video. And I listened to the video, and he said something in the video that did not even make sense the least bit. And then I saw that he made another video afterwards. And I know he made it right afterwards is because he's in the same place where he made the other video. And I don't know why the whole time he was making the video, he had to keep on looking to the side. Like he had something written down on a piece of paper that he had to talk about. I mean, because my stuff is right off the top of my mind. Um... You know, I do for, I mean, you look, you just saw me look away, okay? Do you see anything? Do you see anything that I could have been looking at that I was going off of? Let's look over here to my left. Do I see, if I look to my right, do I see anything? Do I see anything that I'm reading from? Okay, so no, I'm not reading from nothing, absolutely nothing. If you think it's across from me, let's look around. Do you see anything that I'm reading from? Okay, I'm not reading from anything. I mean, if you think it's on the bed. Well, I don't want to show you my bed. <laughs> so, uh, he made a comment in the video that did not make absolutely any sense whatsoever. We are called to come out of darkness into the light, correct? That's what Christ told Paul that that's what he wanted Paul to preach. To come out of the darkness and into the light. This is Christ. This is the Savior of the world. This is Jesus Christ. Now, in the video that he made, and I would like for you to go back and look at the two videos. I'm going to talk about one video, what he said, one thing, and then I want you to watch the other one, okay? He said to come out, um, I mean, he talked about the darkness, and then he talked about looking for the Lord, Looking for the Lord is not how you come out of the darkness. Looking for the Lord is not how you come out of the darkness. I'm looking for the Lord. So you tell me for 2,000 years, people were supposed to be looking for the Lord. That's, that's your example of coming out of darkness is looking for the Lord? Coming out of darkness is coming out of sin. The life that you were living. Okay? Um, because that's it without Jesus Christ, without God, and, and if we were just uh, evolving people, I mean, we're not. If we were just evolving people, you see where we're at right now in this life? You see how wickedness is overwhelmed in this life? Uh, that's exactly how each and every one of us would be if there was no God and there was no Jesus and there was no Holy Spirit. That all we would be doing would just be getting worse. And the only difference is, is that we're born into sin. So if we weren't born into sin, how do you think it would be? I would still think, because of how off people are, that, that it would, we'd still be at each other's throats. So, if you go watch one of the videos that he made, is really coming out of the darkness looking for the Lord? I mean, I'm looking... For 2,000 years. Is coming out of the darkness looking for the Lord? Is that what his example and his excuse is? Okay. So that's one topic I wanted to point out. Now I'm going to talk about another topic. Okay. Um, I've said this before in videos. That there was a lady sit there and said, Why do people like his videos and not my videos? Now I'll tell you the reason why. They like his videos and not her videos. Oh, she has followers. Because she speaks the truth. She has followers. But she don't have one video with 30,000 views like his videos. Okay. He has the itching ear videos. The ear tickling message he gives. She doesn't. She gives the truth. And he gives a false narrative. A bunch of baloney. So, in the first video where he said, coming out of the darkness is looking for the Lord. Uh, that's his example. Um, he said, repent. Okay, so he said repent. At the end of the day, 
what is the real point behind repentance? I mean, I don't care about the change of mind. What is the real point of repentance? So you're not the way you would normally be and in an, a different outlook on life, not living for Satan and turning to God. That's the main outpoint, the, the most the main point behind repentance is that you weren't going to be like you would be living for Satan. That we're all given something because we're born into sin and in darkness. And that is a different outlook. Wow, a different outlook that we're supposed to be looking upon our lives. Okay? That's what really repentance is. Because, I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't ha have anything to do with changing your mind. I'm just saying it's a different change of your mind on your outlook on your life. That is what it is. Now... So he brought up repent in that video. Then he made another video and I just got done watching it. I can't watch it. I can't watch the whole thing. It's garbage. Je he says something just like Chelsea Bedell says. I can't. You're not supposed to. You don't have to repent of your sins every day. I can't repent of my sins every day. In the first place, if you're a Christian, you're not going to be in sin every day. That's the whole outlay, the whole point behind turning from your wicked ways is that you're not going to be living that life no more. I mean, I don't know why people make excuses and I don't know why people twist God's word to make it sound like it's okay to be in sin because Christ took your sins away when he denies again. I don't know how many times I've said this. Lawlessness is practicing sin. So why would Jesus deny a person for lawlessness if there's no sin no more? He's not talking about atheist. That's if you don't like what I'm saying, you're going well. He but uh, but he, he's not talking to atheists there. Now I'll get back on track, Jeff. Okay. So he made the second video, and he makes it sound like. That a person like me, that my message to everybody out here, the gospel is repentance of sins. Uh, no, uh, I think the reason why I'm bringing it up is because Christians aren't doing it at all. That's why I'm bringing it up. I'm bringing it up. It isn't, Jeff isn't talking about repentance is saving you. It's repentance is not saving you if you don't repent. Why would Christ talk about repentance? Why would God's entire word, Paul, Peter, you name them all, they all preach repentance. And again, repentance of wickedness is sin. That's in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. So he brings up in the second video, within the first two or three or four minutes because I couldn't listen to it all. I mean, it's garbage. Garbage. When one person out here preaches a lie, it's garbage as far as I'm concerned. I used to not be able to listen to Chelsea Bedell. I just got done wanting to listen to a first couple of minutes. I couldn't even stand what she had to say because she doesn't get nothing from God. She claims to get something from God. She doesn't get nothing from God whatsoever. She gets something from this delusion that God's given her and the reprobate mind that she's got because she's a liar. So uh, that tells you how much I can stand hearing these people that lie out here. They're, they're liars. They're liars. I mean, there's other people out here I can't stand their videos either. But when I when I listen to him say that we that that we don't, we don't have to repent of sin, he makes it sound like that you're not supposed to, and we are supposed to. I mean, what Christian out here calls themselves a Christian that's in sin in the first place? Who who what Christian? I've seen real Christians before, and they don't blatantly sin at all. 
They don't wake up every day thinking that they're, that they're going to sin and they're just going to sin whenever the time comes and they're, they're going to be covered under the blood because I've seen real Christians. You can go watch some movies where, with people, at Christian movies, and I don't see them blatantly sinning every day, all day long, like so many Christians. So... So his within the first three minutes, he says he basically he basically is making it sound like a person like me, or a person like Jerry Tony or anybody else out here that preaches against sin, against repentance of sin. Why? Why? How how can you even prove that you're even a Christian if there's no regeneration or renewal of the mind, which is coming from repentance? It's not coming from saying that I'm a believer. As a matter of fact, I even read an article yesterday that said that even believing does not prove that you're born again. That you say you believe in God, that there's a God, you even believe what Christ did on the cross, doesn't mean that you're born again. doesn't prove at all that you're born again. You're born again is in your actions. Seeing that if you can bury, even bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Just because you got an itchy ear message that everybody's caught up in listening to. I mean, repentance of wickedness. you got to be kidding me. You don't have to repent of sin. That you don't have to sit here and repent of sin. I'm not basing that that's how you're getting saved. I'm basing if you're not doing that, you're not saved. And you prove it. So, if Jeff had a gospel that I'm out here preaching, it has nothing to do. And I, and, I, and I don't have a gospel that I'm preaching. I just know that why would he bring up repent in one video and then, and then he, he speaks against repenting of sin in another video. You know why? Because he doesn't think he's in sin either. Because he thinks sin was taken from the cross and... Christ took your future sins, then why does he deny Christians that are lawless? Oh, that's right, Jeff. He, and, and you know what? Why did he, why at the, at the beginning of the video does he talk against Catholicism? I know Baptists hate Catholics. I know Baptists hate what Catholics stand for. But you know what? Vice versa is the same. Why does a Catholic like what a Baptist has to say? They both live in sin. Both denominations live in sin. And they blatantly do and don't even give a crap. I, I cannot remember I, I, this woman one day. She said, what is God against? People not doing enough. That's right. Both of them are not doing enough. As one's a hypocrite, so is the other. Oh, I know I'm a hypocrite. I know I am. I know I'm a hypocrite. But I'm also not claiming to be of God either when I'm a hypocrite. And others are. That's a Pharisee. So, uh, why, why even him is he against repentance of sins? As if that's not a mandated to be saved. And yes, it is. It wouldn't be in God's word if it wasn't. If they want to remain in sin and be worldly and not a foreigner, they're not a foreigner. You're not a foreigner if you're in sin. You haven't changed if you're in sin. You're not a Christian if you're in sin. That's right. I'm smart enough to know that I'm not a Christian. I know I'm not. You know, I listen. You know, I, I told my friend yesterday that. It wasn't this last Sunday. I think it was a Sunday before that. I felt the same thing I felt when I was in New Mexico. The same thing. Same thing. Hey, you want me to tell you something? Let me let me get with you and tell you something. Don't think I'm bragging. You think I'm even happy in the first place? You think I'm even happy in the first place what I'm getting ready to say? Oh, you shouldn't get mad. For me telling the truth. Boy, it's real good. Orange juice and tomato juice mixed. Mm. Half and half. Tastes real good. Okay. I've had a problem problem with contentment. Uh, I've sit here and told people... 
that the majority of my life I've had gambling problems. And uh, the last five years, all I've done is gamble my money away. And, and, and I'm not saying this as if I'm happy. At the end of the day, I'm not happy. I bet a three-teamer yesterday for 690 bucks. I won 4,480 bucks. I bet a three-teamer, no, a two-teamer for 300, won 1,088 bucks. So I've got 5,560 5, dollars worth of team, uh, worth of parlays that I won. And let me tell you this right now. When I woke up a minute ago, because I didn't even see the Alabama game, Alabama, I had Alabama on the over, was two of the three team that I bet. And uh, when I woke up and I saw that I had won the bet, I really wasn't happy. Five years of this crap. Five years of this crap. I'm really am not. I, I, I sit here and woke up and I was like, man, I really ought to burn these. Oh, I'm sure one of y'all, you could, don't you burn that. Don't you burn that. Yeah. Five years of this crap like this. Five years of gambling. But I'm sure one of y'all out there, well, if you say you believe you can gamble, well, yeah, and see what it does to you when you when you put money before God. And what have, what have you done, Jeff, the last five years? Well, I just professed it. Even after God making me a watchman, I slowly went downhill in five years. In five years, just garbage. Garbage now, garbage. This, because of the the likes of this. But I don't think I'll uh, burn them. I'm not joking, man. I literally woke up and I was disheartening to see I even won them in the first place, man. I just can, ma I just can just imagine how I would have been if I'd lost it. Well, either way, all I can say is I don't know why. People are against preaching repentance that it has to be mandated in a person's life because I don't understand why Christ would say repent. Paul would say repent. Just about every disciple was preaching repentance. God is preaching repentance. And just because you claim with your lips that you're a new person does not prove that you're a new person. Believing does not prove that you're born again. As a matter of fact, proving you're born again is in your actions. And obedience is a must to be saved. And if you think that I'm preaching obedience, it's what saves you. No. But what are you when you're not obedient? You're disobedient. And tell me how you can be saved being disobedient when God was against disobedience all these years, 40 years in the wilderness, they died because of disobedience. Disobedience. Why did Abraham flourish? Obedience. Maybe it's obedience to faith because faith is a uh, uh, is what it's based off of. But it's uh, there's a reason why his actions.
And most, when most people's Christian lives, their action doesn't speak that they're of God, I think people out here would have to question themselves. But you know what? When I talked to my friend earlier today, which is actually Sunday now, when it was Saturday when I talked to him, uh, the church is blinded right now. Most people are blinded because they believe in the lies so much. They've already sold themselves. They've sold themselves. The people aren't going to get raptured when the time comes. Nope. Very minute people will. The ones that have completely living for Christ through and through. And when you're in sin, you're not living for Christ through and through. You're still of your father, the devil. So I don't know why that Watchman on the Wall 88 said that you don't have to repent every day of your sins. Well, the thing about it is, why are you in sin every day? Again, remember, some sins are covered under love, and some sins lead you to the lake of fire, to the death. Not all sins are the same. And these sins over here that people are committing, that... uh that are living for the Lord, if they're blatantly committing them sins, they will eventually lead to death. Let that sin take root. Let that sin take root and see what happens. Let that sin take root and see what happens. Tell me how much of a Christian you are that the gospel is all about believing believing. That's the gospel too? I mean, isn't that what people are professing? I mean, Chelsea Bedell, uh, the nanosecond after you start believing and you're against turning from sin, how much of a Christian are you? How about it, Watchman on the Wall 88? How about Renee or whatever her name is that believes the same crap? The majority of people believe this crap. <coughs> Remain in your unrepentant sin. See what the case happens. See what happens. He'll never know you. You're a worldly Christian. You're, you're not a foreigner. You haven't separated yourself from the, from the world. You're just like the world. You think Jesus Christ is going to accept you as being just like the world? Only time will tell. So, uh, again, I don't know, I, I know why people don't like that woman's message and they like his message, because he has the itchy ear. He can, he can, he can give a message and people go, oh, this is what I wanted. I wanted to remain in sin and be a part of you, God. God, I wanted to remain in sin and be a part of you. Yes, 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 yes. Because, actually... There's a delusion going on. You have your father the devil. You believe the lies. And then you started preaching it. That's what's wrong with Christianity right now. Well, I don't know what to say. Deli de uh, uh, deny all ungodliness, like Jerry Tony would say. It's in the book of Titus, too. I mean, if, if Watchman on the Wall is going to bring up that one scripture in the book of Titus, as a matter of fact, here's the hypocrites in Christianity. You want to hear them? You want to hear the hypocrites in Christianity? <laughs> Out with the Old Testament, in with the New Testament. Okay, then if you don't like what the Old Testament has to say, or not even what all the New Testament has to say, then why are you bringing up Psalms 91? I mean, Psalms 91 is before Psalms 119, 155, when salvation is far from the wicked, and you're wicked, and you think you're going to have salvation? You're in sin, and you're going to have salvation. 
that leads to the lake of fire. Yeah, that leads to the lake of fire. So why bring up certain scriptures? Oh, pick and choose, pick and choose, pick and choose scriptures in the Bible. Pick and choose. This is an ear tickler. This is an ear tickler. This one, oh my goodness, get away from me. Pick and choose, 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 pick, choose, pick, 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 and choose, pick, 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 and choose scriptures, pick and, oh, this one's no good, it actually means I have to obey, let me get this disobedient scripture and preach this. This disobedient scripture and preach this. And this one. And this one. Pick, 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 stepped out of that ignorance and so many of them have gone back to that ignorance just like the Bible talks about well free will is going to be a son of a gun it's going to be a son of a gun one day stepping in front of Christ and then you're going to want to go man I actually should have changed my life you're right Christ thanks for telling me I am the same person but there's only one outcome and yes, Christ isn't going to go into detail about it either. That's right. He does it. He denies you. He denies you. He's not going to explain to, to millions and 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 billions and billions of people why they're going to the lake of fire. He's not. You're going to be in line and you're going to hear it from the person in front of you. You're going to go, well, I know where I'm going. That's right. You're going to go, I know exactly where I'm going because I heard it from the person before and the person before and the person before. And then, oh, that's right. There was a faithful one up there. I should have listened to that person. I'm not a faithful person, people. I'm a wicked person just like most of y'all. That's right. I have my free will. My free will right now. I don't know what it is. I don't know what the hell's going on. But it is sure. It sure is not following the Bible or God's word. And most people pick, 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 pick. And choosing isn't doing no good. So repent of wickedness in the book of Acts is repenting of sin. That's exactly what it is. So I'm thinking that that, sign, that kind of sounds like it's commanded to us. There's more than just commands from the Ten Commandments. There's more other commands in the Bible. And, and, and I don't see no love out here. I don't see no love supposed to love our neighbors and all this stuff I don't see no love I don't even see love for God in what in most people's messages out here you can you can think that these people are right by saying that you don't have to repent of sin but you're wrong you have to repent of sin you cannot let it run rampant in your life you cannot that is coming out of the darkness and into the light. You've got to be a different creation in Christ. And I don't see it in most Christians out here. I'm sorry, people. I just, I'm not, I'm, I, don't, I don't think inside the box. I'm not, I'm not telling people that they're dumb or fools, but I'm not a dumb and I'm not a fool. Where I'm dumb is to be sitting here doing this crap like this. And like I said, I didn't bring that crap up to point out that I had won $5,000 when I only actually won $4,000 because I put up $1,000 to win it. Uh, what I'm pointing by behind that is where I know what my problem's been in the last five years and it hadn't been, actually, I'm not, yeah, I'm not going into detail, man. I think I've done enough in this video. I know right now, uh, uh, Watchman of the Wall 88 is no different than a Chelsea Bedell, an ear-tickling message. That you don't have to do anything out here to be saved whatsoever. You can be a disobedient person living in sin and be of your father the devil and still inherit the kingdom. How is that possible, people? Where's Satan going? To the lake of fire? How can you be a part of him and inherit the kingdom? 
That's right, you are going to separate yourself. But, that's not an ear-tickling message. And you know what? If I go to hell, you go to hell. You deserve, and I deserve what we, we deserve. Plain and simple. If you don't like it, what more could I say? I mean, my message is not repentance to salvation. Uh, it's why aren't you living a repentive life? Why aren't you living a repentive life? I mean, that's what it is. And that's the reason why everything falls apart in the end days. It is. It's the Christians are the very reason why. I don't blame it on atheists out here. I blame it on Christians. I blame it on Christians from all falling apart because the, uh, the Christians should know better and they don't know better. I mean, they're no different. They're the same as these worldly people out here that call themselves atheists and devil worshippers. They're of their father, the devil. The broad path is where they headed. The broad path. Not this little narrow path. They're headed to the broad path. Why? For the lack of knowledge? Whose fault is that when you don't want to fear God? Whose fault? Oh, wow. How'd that happen? Whose fault? Whose fault? Quit pointing at yourself, Jeff. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, my I, again, I'm not pointing out repentance as if it's a gospel. I'm pointing out repentance because that's not what people are doing. They're not living a repentive life. They're not at all. You can sit here and say, I repent? Oh, yeah. Okay, then why are people are still doing the things that they're doing? Because repent means to actually, I mean, it does, there's no definition what I'm saying, but repentance means not to go back to the things that your former self. And when you're doing the same things that your former self, how much of a repentant Christian are people out here? Not much. 